And you're listening to Subculture on centralcoastradio.com. And right now, we are turning our attention to the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. And one of the comedians that is taking part in this year's festival is James Clark, who has a show on for three nights only. So you've got to get in if you want to get tickets to James's show. It's called Comedy for Corporates, Work-Life Balance is for Losers. And to tell us a little bit more about this show, we've actually got James on the phone right now. Welcome to the program, James. James. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. So, James, tell us a little bit about this show, Comedy for Corporates. What can people expect if they head along? Um, just a great night of laughs, really. Look, uh, a lot of the comedy, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's very dude, bro type, you know, living life, not working a job that provides a group certificate. Um, but the guys of us working, most of us working in office, kind of got a different sort of lifestyle. You know, we're just trying to balance that. So we've got different things we complain about yeah. compared to everyone else. And so it's, but as you'll learn, we are masters of complaining about how bad we've got it despite being well paid. So yeah, it's just a bit of a look about those of us who kind of work through lockdown and now beyond and just what it's life for life on the other side of the, was the corporate fence inside the building as opposed to outside the front protesting. Yep. So what's that like for you? Like, tell us a little bit about like, like I grew up with a dad who, um, who worked as administrative manager. So he pretty much worked that same kind of job. What, what's it like? And, and how do you balance comedy with that? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing. I mean, like I kind of feel no one really loves it. It's just that they kind of secure you there with like that lifestyle creep. Like you start getting, you know, you start out, you know, I worked at McDonald's and in hospitality and that kind of thing. And it's, you know, it's something that's always kind of a stepping stone to something else. And then you start doing office jobs and you, you kind of get office job comfortable, you know, and then it starts, to, you know, you sort of have less trouble paying rent. And then you can go on a holiday and you can buy yourself a car. And then it's kind of like, all right, this is what I'll do. But it's, I feel it's like it's never really anyone's true passion or it's a very small few for whom it is. Yep. And it's kind of, that's the trade off for me. So, yeah, like comedy is my passion. Um, but comedy doesn't pay the bills, you know, and entertaining and performing arts doesn't pay the bills as much as, you know, working in an office does. So, yeah, look, I've, uh, at the moment, I've just got that trade off. So, I look, do long hours in an office job for a bank and then try and fill the rest of my remaining time with comedy and performing. So, it's, it's hard, but look, you know, the, that hard is all on me. Yeah. You know, I could choose a different job with less hours, but I wouldn't pay as well. So, I mean, it's kind of the point of the show. Like, you know, what are we complaining about? If we were truly, genuinely unhappy with what we're doing, then, you know, we live in a great country, we can reskill, we can find something else, most likely. But look, so if you want that magic work life balance where you get high pay, low hours, it probably doesn't exist. So, you, know, you just got to be strategic about how you do it. And, you know, do you do it for a while and get out? Um, but you, at some point, you've got to make peace with it, which is what I've done. You know, it is what it is. So you can win your battle, just get on with doing it. And I suppose what I'm trying to do is gear more into comedy, but, you know, tough transition. Yeah. Is it easy to find comedy in it? Like, was this show quite easy for you to put together and to get some laughs in there? Yeah, no, I, I think so. Like, it's just, there's, I mean, there's a lot of, despite, you know, the industry work in banking, it's kind of universal, like I feel it was. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, petty annoyances and there's just a lot of things, you know, about, you know, our lifestyle, you know, being a bit more financially secure. I'm not talking about extremely wealthy, but not having the same money concerns as someone who's working casually and struggling to make ends meet. So, yeah, I feel it was. I mean, it's just about... I mean, the alternative view here is not that, you know, everyone should just go and make as much money as they can and that's the key to happiness. It's about, you know, what is it is going to, what is it that you feel is going to truly make you happy? Yeah. You know, and money for us is a security thing. You know, we try and obtain wealth so we have choices in our life because if you don't, then you're at the mercy of the state for its welfare or its charity, which is, you know, it's fine, perfectly fine for someone who's unfortunate in that situation. I hope, you know, they're very well taken care of. But we we don't personally want to be in that situation ourselves. So we try and do as much as we can and work as hard as we can to get away from it. So, I don't know, I kind of feel like, you know, perhaps we excessively complain about a situation, about the long hours and the difficulties we face when, 
you know, we kind of chose that, you know. So if you want the fancy European holidays, you know, you want the nice cars and, you know, the income security and the nice places, then, you know, you've got to have some trade-off, and that is you just lose your free time and you lose part of your identity to a, you know, what can be a, a soulless, sort of boring type job for many of us. So, yeah, I think there's plenty of it's, it's rich comedic veins in that side of the world because a lot of us are living it. Definitely. You know, it's, we're kind of there. Yeah, and I think also, as you mentioned, the lockdowns changed a lot of people's opinions about occupations and things as well. And I know it caused a, an interesting dynamic in our family because I worked in radio and I also worked for an overseas newspaper. So all of my work was done from home during that two years. Yeah. But my wife was an essential worker. So she got mm. to go to work every day and I started to get jealous of that. I was like, well, it's all right for you. You get to leave the house every day and go to work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that something as well that you found it's, that like it things changed during that lockdown period? It has. And look, there was a bit of work from home before lockdown, as everyone knew. But, you know, it's very surprising how you know, businesses who are kind of predominantly anti-work from home, like, had completely no issue with it when that was the only alternative. And maybe the power has shifted a little bit back to the employee in this situation where, you know, the younger demographic is saying they are, you know, a flexibility in working arrangement is key for them and they will potentially move customers to obtain it. And I don't know, it's, it's definitely been a, a fundamental momentum shift um, between, you know, pre and post lockdown. But yeah, it's just, it seems like it's been an odd time. We're trying to find out what the new normal is because, yeah, like there is, it comes down to the individual too. Like some people are naturally more extroverted and they get energy from being around other people and, you know, that's perfectly okay. Um, there's some people who are sort of more, you know, commonly introverted. And they're kind of more, you know, quiet, focused types who like, you know, the you know the isolation, let's call it, to sort of focus on a problem, work through it, and then come up with a solution. So it's a bit of a mix. So I think hybrid is here to stay. I don't think, you know, purely remote. But when we're talking about remote work, like, you're absolutely right. There are some essential workers who will never be able to work remote. Yeah. Like the doctors and the nurses, you know, the police, you know, trades, you know, essential service. Like... They hear us talking about working from home and think, God, good on you. Like, you know, you're complaining about, you know, having to do a few days in the office when we have to do, you know, five, six, sometimes seven days or even more, like where we just do not work from home at all. We do not, you know, get up five minutes before our first meeting. We don't just sort of, you know, roll out of bed. Like it's it's a total privilege, I feel, to at least have the option to work from home because it's, you know, it's it's a huge, look, it's a huge money saver. You know, it's no commute, so you're not wasting money there. It's, yeah, like this, is the, the, this is how we're spoiled, those of us who do work in offices with that option. Definitely. Now, James, your show, as I mentioned, is only on for three nights. How excited are you being about being part of the comedy festival and, and being able to brought your show out there to people? Absolutely. So, yeah, the, we had great. So I've just come from Adelaide Fringe and we had three sold-out shows, which was amazing, and Melbourne's, you know, it's the dual comedy capital of Australia with Sydney. Melbourne Comedy Festival is a huge festival. So many good acts to see. Um, you know, it's in South Bank, so it's nice and central. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely looking forward to this. And yeah, uh, the Belgian Beer Cafe in South Bank got great food and drink, apparently. Haven't been there yet, but very much looking forward to that. Apparently, they did a great schnitty, so. I can confirm that. I've been there a few times, and it's absolutely yeah. fantastic. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so look, come along, make a night of it, you know, watch some great comedy. There's lots of acts on in that room, like at all times, they're running multiple shows. But yeah, and no, I'm super keen to get down there. i um, be down there early next week. I'll be down there sooner, but work's got me chained to my desk at the moment, so I can't get away. But no, I, I can't wait for it. And it's I'm filming the, the Grand Prix weekend, so it's going to be plenty of people in town. There's a great energy in Melbourne that time of year for this festival. So yeah, I would, even if you're not, you know, a comedy fan, like now is the time to go out and see a show because there's so many there, so many options. And it's, as I said, it's great to be in Melbourne. Definitely. And for all of our listeners out there, James's show is on from Thursday the 30th of March through to Saturday the 1st of April. 
Um, tickets are available from the Comedy Festival website. And as he said before, it's at the Belgium Beer Cafe in South Bank, which is an absolutely great venue. James, is there anything you'd like to say to people out there who are thinking about heading along and checking out your show? Just come along, you know, rich or poor. You know, the tickets are competitively priced, so you who are working poor perhaps can fit it in before or after your shift at the Box Factory um, or at between, you know, your on-land or on-yacht sessions. So it's it's really for everyone. Look, you you don't have to work in and off first to sort of get it. We have a good time. Like, it's, it's not super political. You know, we talked about what they do, you know, about how they can increase their pay and just, like, you know, keep it light and bright and easy and just, like, have a lot of laughs. And it's, like, a great time had by all. So very much looking forward to seeing everyone down there. Definitely. And for all the listeners, again, James's show is called Comedy for Corporates. Work-Life Balance is for Losers, and it's on from the 30th of March to the 1st of April at the Belgium Beer Cafe in South Bank. James, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us today. It's been an absolute honor having you on the show, and we hope that a lot of our listeners will head along and check out your show as part of the Comedy Festival. Thanks, Dave. Thanks so much. Great to talk to you.